Okay, so welcome everybody again, and uh, uh, welcome to this course of uh, uh, Web Applications uh, 1. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will, uh, as usual, uh, spend some time at the beginning uh, in describing uh, how the course is organized, what you're going to do, the exam, and the usual stuff. Uh, okay, so that uh, we can, uh, you, we and you can have an idea uh, about what to expect in the next uh, 60 hours uh, that we are going to spend uh, together. Um, the course uh, is, you know, uh, is split in, in three versions. Uh, one is, uh, this is missing the clip, so it, it will not stay in place. Okay. Um, the course is divided in three uh, instances, in three copies, two in English and one in Italian. Uh, the one in Italian is by uh, Professor Masala. And uh, uh, the English courses are uh, given by me from A to H and from, A to, and from uh, um, by Professor De Russis, uh, second part, second half of the, of the alphabet. Okay? And the three courses are uh, totally aligned in terms of contents, in terms of, uh, of, of exam, of materials, and so on. So if there are any reasons for you to, <laughs> to shift or to follow other teachers or whatever, uh, in, the material is the same and the exam is the same, so shoot yourself. Uh, we, are, we have also three, basically four uh, people uh, helping us uh, also in the labs, uh, whose names are listed down here. And in this course, uh, in my course, uh, the person that will help us in the lab uh, will be um, one Pablo time hmm? uh, that you will meet uh, next week. Okay, so uh, this is the... Uh, First, uh, and uh, uh, first course about web applications in the master degree, and for many of you, many of you, it will also be the only course about web applications, depending, of course, uh, on the career path uh, that you chose uh, in your uh, enrollment. Okay, and so we are trying to uh, fulfill two goals. One is uh, to give you a general idea about. Uh, uh, all the elements, all the ingredients that are needed in web applications for those who say, will not continue in, this, uh, uh, in these topics uh, and uh, at the same time uh, uh, trying to have a stronger foundation on the front end of the web applications uh, so that people that, we are going, that are going to study more uh, uh, these topics uh, will uh, study back-end issues and security issues and so on in later courses. Okay? Uh, so we're trying to, uh, to, to give something to everybody. Uh, the idea, of course, is un to understand uh, uh, how the web uh, is working, how the web ar is architected, so how the uh, clients and servers are working, what kind of languages, what kind of interactions, and so on, and uh, uh, what it means to develop a web application in uh, 2020, 23, whatever. Um, we will uh, uh, spend uh, or use uh, the JavaScript language, so we'll uh, spend a uh, lot of time in uh, understanding the language itself, uh, and uh, so that JavaScript is uh, the only language which is available at the front-end level, so inside browsers, and it's also well, somewhat used also in the back-end uh, for some kind of application. And so it's becoming uh, one of the, you know, together with uh, Python, Java, and, and C++ is one of the, mm, the major languages that well, we cannot uh, uh, avoid, okay, in our, in our, uh, in our study. Uh, we are going to work at two different levels. One is we are trying to work uh, uh, at the basic level, interacting with the browser, interacting with JavaScript language, uh, uh, in a native way, hmm, without any additional li libraries, just to master the language and to understand uh, how browsers work. We will understand that it's a lot of work, and there's a lot of details, there are many details to, to handle, and so we'll uh, switch in the second half of the course uh, to a framework. Hmm? A framework that will help us, a set of libraries that will help us create a web applications in a okay, better way or it's not easier, but it, we, it will allow, allow us to go to higher levels of complexity, okay? Uh, and this uh, framework that we are going to use is React. 
which is uh, one of the major two or three frameworks uh, that are you know, also used in industry for, for creating a real world application. React is, uh, by the way, is the library is being used by Facebook for their own website. So it's uh, quite well tested. Mm -hmm. um, so, and the, the special focus of the core, this core, okay, we will try to build a complete application, but most of our focus will be on the front end. So we'll take a lot of shortcuts on the back end or in the middleware uh, because the, we only have six uh, credits uh, and uh, so uh, not everything may fit uh, into 60 hours uh, and we'll try to uh, you know, have a, a good focus on that. And if we don't stop at 60 hours, uh, uh, this can be an idea, a picture that try to, tries to uh, give you an idea about what comes next, okay? So we are in this first box here, uh, Web Applications 1. Uh, where, okay, the focus, as I said, is understanding the web and programming on the front end, programming on the browser. Hmm? Uh, after that, uh, in the curriculum, there are two other, can I say, courses in, uh, in sequence. One is uh, distributed system programming, which is a course for next year, of course, uh, uh, given by Professor Sisto, uh, that will give you the bed, more, more say, deeper and uh, you know, a sounder basis uh, for what happens uh, when you are programming uh, distributed systems, okay? So uh, in parallel this year you are probably following the, um, uh, the course uh, of uh, distributed system programming, something like, no, um, sorry, system programming, hmm? system and device programming, uh, where you are going to learn uh, a lot of <coughs> concurrent programming. So different uh, processes and threads running on a single computer. We, in distributed system programming, we are trying to move on the interaction between different processes that are run on different servers, di different computers across the network. So the problems, of course, uh, are much bigger or more different. Uh, basically, because you are not sharing the clock, you are not sharing the memory, you are not sharing the CPU, and so it becomes much more difficult to synchronize everything. And so these the foundations uh, and uh, the techniques uh, for handling this kind of application will be here. In Web Application in Web App 1, uh, there will be times uh, where we will uh, make assumptions. Okay, so I, I'm creating Web Application, but let's assume that only one or two users are using it at the same time. Because what happens if 100 users are trying to modify the same data? How can we ensure the integrity of the data and so on? This is something that we cannot solve with the, you know, only the, <laughs> the techniques that uh, study in this course. Uh, and this will be uh, seen in the second course, while the Web Application 2 course, which is uh, in the second semester of next year, uh, given by Professor <coughs> Malnati, Giovanni Malnati, uh, will uh, go uh, deeply on the uh, server side uh, of, the, uh, of the application. So give you all the information about the different architectures on the server side uh, and uh, uh, work a lot about scalability and performance. So these are the three courses that make up a web curriculum. And to these courses, uh, we, I would add uh, other two, which uh, mm, fit uh, very nicely. Uh, the first one is uh, human-computer interaction. So it's an elective course, it's not in a single curriculum. Uh, that will give you the skills uh, to create something which is not totally ugly, okay? So we as computer engineers uh, are particularly nerdy also in interfaces and we are uh, very, we are very gifted in creating something which is really uh, ugly and uh, impossible to look at. Uh, and uh, where the usability uh, usually is not, uh, is not an issue, it's not something that we think about, okay? And uh, actually, if we want to create something that other people will use, uh, uh, we need to, do, to think that, uh, you know, real applications Web application, mobile applications, whatever. Real applications are uh, used by real people, okay? Not by computer engineers, which are not, uh, don't, don't fall into the category of real people, and of normal people at least. Um, so, in human computer interaction, uh, we, uh, we learn, you will learn, uh, we will learn, uh, I say we because I took, I had also this course a couple of years ago now. Uh, it's uh, uh, Darussis and, and Monger <laughs> who are giving it. Um, you will learn uh, how to design an application which uh, 
fulfills the user requirements uh, and is usable, is easy to use, uh, is you know, nice to use and so on. And people you know, don't fight against it, but just use it ni nicely, okay? And uh, it's, uh, uh, we, we need te design techniques in order to do that. No? And uh, uh, whether you are going for web application, for mobile, for desktop, uh, I think it's uh, uh, somebody, at least somebody in the team must have these skills. Hmm? And uh, another uh, course uh, that you may choose uh, is mobile application development. Uh, of course, it's about mobile programming. It's again Professor Malnati who is uh, giving this course. And uh, in a way, it fits with the backend because usually today, uh, the backend of web applications uh, is uh, the same usually as the backend of the mobile application. So you build a mobile application that it interacts with the server with some set of APIs and the same, the same APIs are used uh, by the web version of the same uh, application. Or maybe in some cases, the integration is much more profound so that the same code base is used for the website and for the application. There are progressive web applications, for example, that create a website and package it into a web application. There are uh, libraries such as React Native that use the same React framework, uh, but uh, in the end, they compile native mobile uh, applications. So, Actually, the, the, of course, the, the environment is different. Uh, it's not a web browser, it's a mobile phone, but many of the design techniques uh, or the design patterns uh, are, are, are consistent uh, with what you are doing in the web. So, you have something to, uh, to keep yourself busy for, for the next two years. Um, in this course, so let's go back to our small 60 hours. Um, we are trying to follow four different, uh, let's say, main topics, okay? These four pillars. The first one is uh, JavaScript as a language. And this is a choice. Uh, there are many approaches or some courses around there that start from here. So, okay, this is a framework. I teach you how to use this framework. Okay? We are not following this approach. We are following, because you know, teaching the framework is a skill that will die when the framework will no longer be popular. And then you will learn how to do some things, but not why. You know? And I, I think an engineer should have a different understanding. So we are taking the long route here. We are starting to study the language, JavaScript, which is interesting. You will hate it, and then Somebody will love it, but still hating it a bit. Uh, but for historical reason, it's a really uh, the design of JavaScript has really been very constrained by its origins. But anyway, uh, it's one of the, the major languages, so we must uh, at least live with them. Hmm? Not maybe not love them, but live together. Uh, and so we'll try to understand the foundations of the language. That will uh, enable us, when we move to the framework, uh, to understand uh, why some, thi some things are done in some ways. Uh, and especially, okay, JavaScript, the, the language itself is, okay, another programming language. But what is specific is the uh, asynchronous programming model that is built into the language and that is necessary to work inside the browser, inside a distributed system. So everything we will do will... Uh, and the major difficulty will be thinking asynchronously, okay? With a, with a strange model because it's asynchronous but it's single-threaded. We, we'll get to that, okay? So it's a very strange, uh, a, dif a different way of things of, of, of organizing the code, okay? Uh, first, we will understand how the language is working, what are its main constructs, how to handle asynchronicity, how to handle objects, for example, um, and then, and we'll do that with uh, simple programs just running uh, interactively on our computer. Then we can try to move uh, the uh, JavaScript language inside the browser. So we need to understand how the browser is working. And so, of course, you'll need to understand a bit about HTML, CSS, how the web pages are done, something which is very light, very, uh, HTML is very easy. CSS are, are much more, are a bit more difficult, but we don't need to go no, too deep in detail. We, you, we will 
use frameworks uh, also to help us uh, you know, structure out. We are not we are not going to do a lot of web design here. Spend a lot of time in designing the web applications with with all the all the graphics, all the fonts, all the space. We need to learn how to put together something, but uh, uh, not we we'll not we are not allowed to spend too much time on this part. But we will spend time in understanding how the JavaScript language is integrated inside the browser, and especially this DOM, which is the object model inside the browser that JavaScript can use. So this is a, um, a tree of objects that can be manipulated by our code, and this is the interface between our JavaScript code and the browser execution. So everything that, will, that happens in the browser is uh, through the manipulation of these uh, uh, objects, uh, DOM stays for uh, document object model. So it's a bunch of objects that represent uh, what is currently on the screen. Hmm? And we need to understand uh, very well how this is working. And again, this is working all asynchronously and so on. So how the browser supports uh, dynamic applications written in JavaScript. We will do that with plain JavaScript and with a plain DOM. So we start, we'll first try to learn how to implement uh, without, without the help of any uh, extra, extra library to implement a simple web application running in the browser. Uh, and the next step will be to uh, move to some framework, some extra library that will help us develop in the front end. We will understand in this phase uh, how difficult it is to keep everything together, to keep all information in the page synchronized. And so we will move uh, to a framework that will help us uh, manage all the synchronization, all the publication, all the updates uh, in the page. Uh, it will uh, simplify a lot of our development, uh, so it will allow us to create more complex applications with a price to pay. Uh, the price to pay is uh, that we need to think and organize our code according to the conventions imposed by the framework. And uh, we cannot, if we don't like something, uh, the framework doesn't care and it requires us to do something some, in some specific way. And uh, uh, what we will learn is uh, uh, basically to do functional programming and stateless functions and so on. So uh, organizing the code in a reactive way with stateless functions that are called uh, asynchronous by, asynchronously by the framework when they want it. Huh? And uh, this will be another step uh, in, uh, in abstraction about the working of the application. Hmm? So that's that we're going to do today. A, a web application doesn't work without a server. So our focus will be on the front end, of course, uh, but the front end at some time needs a place where to validate the password, needs a place where to store the data and so on. And that will be our back end. We will do the minimum possible, uh, we'll spend the minimum uh, possible amount of time in the back end programming. And uh, you know, for you know, uh, efficiency, we are going to use uh, one, well, there are many possible choices for, for back end programming, uh, environments, libraries, or languages. Uh, in the front end, only JavaScript is the only language which is supported by the browser. In the back end, you may choose. We will choose a, a simple uh, um, framework for uh, server-side uh, uh, implementation in, uh, in JavaScript, which is called uh, um, Express. Just not to switch languages, so we will do everything in JavaScript. It's not the most efficient one, but it's enough for our purposes. We will have a minimum back end just to you know, support uh, the APIs and data storage and so on. So these are the four main topics that fit uh, in a sequence. When we are, uh, start programming the DOM, we will have a good understanding of the language. When we start uh, uh, creating components uh, in React, uh, we can understand how they work at the DOM level because, of course, they will... Uh, a React component is a high-level component that, at the end, will create nodes in the, in the DOM and will create uh, elements in HTML, okay? So this is the big picture. We'll eat it a piece of a time during the weeks. So this is the, the plan for uh, the different weeks. We should have something wrong because there are not only 11 weeks because there are 14. 
but uh, uh, the idea is that the last, uh, if everything goes well, okay, in the last, uh, the very last week we will not have lectures. We'll have a bit of more lectures this week uh, at the beginning. So we will still three hours from the end of the course uh, and uh, make them this Thursday. So that we can you know, uh, put some effort, more effort in the theory, say, of JavaScript at the beginning and then leave you the last week uh, basically free. The week 14. And what happened to week uh, uh, 12 and 13 it will be for uh, exam exercises. So nothing new but about exercise and labs. Okay, so this is just a more or less the schedule of the topics across the week. You know about uh, the room, the timetable, and so on. Uh, we have uh, the Tuesday mornings together in this room. And uh, usually the labs uh, are on Thursday morning in the other room, 8i. Uh, there will be a lab in the classroom, so we, you will need to have your computer and uh, have a good uh, connection to the Wi-Fi of the Polytechnic. Don't use your smartphone or hotspot or whatever because they, they start very quickly to interfere with each other and the uh, will be very low. Uh, so if, if you're not connected to your own, fix it now and uh, so that you can work uh, nicely in the, in the classroom. Uh, of course, of these uh, two hours, uh, they will be split in, uh, in groups. Uh, so one group will come on the first hour and the other group uh, in the second hour, where they will split. Um, since the students are still enrolling and uh, the lab will start only next week, uh, I will wait. I will wait still a, a few days uh, for you not know, doing the, the alphabetical split uh, in the two hours uh, uh, to have an, uh, an even distribution of students. Okay, so the lab will start uh, not this Thursday, so the second of March, but the next one, that's the ninth of March. Okay, and while this week we will use these three hours uh, in class, so we'll do a lecture, uh, even in the, always in the room eight I. Hmm? So. We have three, three lectures with me, and then the first lab in the second week. So this is the only exception to the, to the schedule. Um, the classes are here. Uh, this, this classroom should have our outlets and the desks. They should be. Uh, are they? Yes. Are they working? I don't know. Uh, which is a separate issue. Uh, I will record uh, all the lectures. So uh, I will not stream them in real time. But uh, after the, if it's working, okay. yeah, seems to be working. Um, at, at the end of each uh, class, uh, I will upload the, the, the videos, both to uh, the Portal della Didattica and to YouTube also. So you can watch them where you like better. Um, this is for, all, of course, all the classes, uh, but th the labs will not be recorded because there's nothing to, to record, it's just you working, okay? It will be very boring having a, a bunch of people working on video. Um, and sometimes uh, for some of the topics, uh, we are not going to explain them or deal with them in the classroom, but we'll give you some set of links or documents to read where there's nothing really not to understand, but just to to know to, to read, for example, about HTML or about uh, the web architecture. You have some readings, say, uh, that will tell you in advance, uh, please, before that date, uh, have a look at this uh, information so that we don't waste time together in telling boring stuff, right? Um, the labs uh, will start uh, next week, as we said. Uh, we will publish the text uh, online, and uh, so we can, you can start having a look uh, uh, before the lab itself, uh, and uh, the idea was we try to make the exercises not too long uh, so that they can be solved mostly during the lab hours. Hmm? 90 minutes is not so long, uh, but uh, so maybe you need to finish something at home, but we'll try not to give you too much uh, uh, work uh, from one week to the other. We will publish the solutions, of course, with some delay hmm, in order to help you try to develop your version before looking at the solution. Oh, these are not secrets because you, if you search enough, uh, 
uh, you find the solution from last year, but just to hmm, help you uh, try to develop uh, the work. You can work uh, along, you can work with some friends during the labs uh, uh, as you prefer, okay? Um, in the labs, uh, we are uh, basically uh, creating, or apart from the first uh, four labs, which are for basic stuff, uh, we'll build uh, piece, uh, piece by piece uh, um, an example application, okay? So the labs will uh, continue from, work to, from week to week. Some labs will be one exercise uh, due for that week. Some labs will be longer. So we say, okay, develop this functionality in the next uh, two weeks, in the next three weeks, uh, because maybe it's something longer. We will give you a guideline uh, what to do uh, at the different steps. Okay, but at the end we'll uh, we'll put everything together. So they are not separate exercises. There are different uh, points that we are uh, we are adding to the same project. Okay. Um, okay. Let, let's not look at this uh, split because this is what I computed two days ago. But now it's already shifted, so we'll uh, uh, organize it. Okay. Uh, about the uh, material, uh, everything you need uh, uh, to know or to find is on this website. So I'm not really using the Portale della Didattica for the material. A lot of you are still, uh, we didn't have uh, the access or in Erasmus, there are a lot of special cases, uh, so I don't want to find, uh, fight with the Portale for every single student that can access. I put everything here on this website. And the website you find uh, some information which is uh, useless to you because you are already here. Uh, you find uh, the schedule of the classes, uh, and this is uh, the main page here, because uh, for every class uh, I try to put in advance uh, the topics that we're going to deal with and uh, the material for that, the resources. The resources may be, for example, here, uh, the slides, uh, or maybe a, a project for the lab, uh, or so on. And the video column, I will populate with links to video, with our lectures after, after the fact. So here we, you find uh, the top, I, I try to plan, okay, we have the planning for the whole course, but I will publish it one week at a time, one week in advance, so that you can plan also if some topic is more interesting or not, uh, you can plan whether to come to class or not. If you come, I'm happy, of course. Um, here you have the links uh, for uh, YouTube, uh, um, where you will find all the playlists uh, for the videos, and you will find also in your personal page on the portal. So there's a lot of application, but at least you can find everything you need. There is the page development resources with some links uh, to the software that we are using during the course. And uh, well, some information about the exam, but uh, I, I will explain it in, in the slide, in, using the slides. Um, okay, we are, the course is uh, uh, very oriented uh, on, uh, with, um, with the usage of GitHub. So we are uh, publishing the slides uh, uh, on GitHub also. So you can download them from, this, uh, from the course page, but there's also a repository called Materials from GitHub uh, where, we are going, where we are basically publishing the slides there, and then we are linking them. So if you want, you can clone this repository and you can pull every, every week uh, the new material that appears there. Okay? So maybe it's easier than just clicking and downloading each and every file. Uh, this is part of an organization where we have also other, okay, um, other repositories, there will be repositories for the labs and a special repository that is called Wix. So we see three of them where we are, we are going to publish all the exercises, all the code that we are working, that we will develop in classroom. So I will do some coding with you. Uh, we will do a lot of live coding because I think the best way to learn something is by doing it, not just by looking at the lights do some examples and so on, and at the end of the hour, I will commit it to GitHub on this repository. It will have many folders, week one, week two, week three, and week four, so we, you can find uh, all the code, uh, good or bad, <laughs> that you write during these hours. Hmm? And this is linked also here. So, in this, in this organization, you find the materials uh, that you also find linked in the website, weeks, uh, which is all the exercises, and uh, also the labs will appear here. The text of the labs is under material, and the solution of the labs will be published at different projects too. So, uh, between the course and the GitHub page that contains the, the link material, you have everything, everything you need. Hmm? You should. 
Okay, so this is the same information that I gave you. For uh, communications, uh, we are uh, using uh, uh, Telegram as much as possible. So I'll try to avoid as much as possible uh, mails uh, or other, other form of communication that can easily be lost. Uh, so, uh, of course, you, if you are not uh, enrolled yet, you should uh, join this group. Of course, you cannot copy this uh, link, uh, but the link itself is in the information page of the course here. So if you just go to this page here and uh, on the Elite Police IT and uh, from here you go to Web Applications 1 and then to Information and join the group, okay? If you're, if you're not already there. I will put all the information, the news uh, uh, on this uh, Telegram group uh, and, uh, and also feel free to ask any questions uh, or share information or whatever. So just something to keep us aligned, okay? Um, I don't promise to, to respond to emails, but uh, I promise to respond to all the uh, Telegram group, hmm? so to all the messages uh, in the group. Uh, we are working, we will all work uh, with, with GitHub. I know that you are learning GitHub in the uh, software engineering course, uh, and uh, uh, so it's uh, also a good way, to, you know, if you have a problem with your, with your exercise, just share the link to the repo uh, on Telegram and clone me, have a look at your code, have been tested, and so on. You know, we have hours in the lab, but also offline, uh, or, or sorry, online uh, after hours, so we can have a look at that. So the, the slide that you've been waiting for, uh, the exam. Uh, the exam of this course uh, is uh, all practical. Uh, the, the, in this course, we'll ask you to do develop a project, a website, an application in React. We will give you uh, the specifications for this application 20 days, maybe 21 or 22, it depends, uh, but at least 20 days before the exam date. So when you see the exam date will be, I don't know, the 7th of June or whatever, I don't know, are they already out the date? No, no, okay. So whatever it will be, 20 days before, um, we'll publish a specification. And you have 20 days for developing the project on your own. Then you submit the project on the submission date, on the exam date. So if the exam is, uh, for example, uh, the 8th of June, you have until midnight of the 7th of June to submit your project on GitHub. Okay? Uh, so the suggestion you start, we are, we are providing you with a skeleton project in GitHub with the system which is called with GitHub Classroom. We'll, we'll use it, uh, we show it during the last weeks, uh, where you can have your own private uh, repository uh, where we, you can work uh, privately, but we can have access to so all this uh, mechanism. And then you can submit uh, the content of that repository. So you can work uh, on a GitHub repo, so not on, just on your computer so that you, can, you don't lose any, anything. <laughs> even in the event of, uh, of crashes or something like that. And at the end, we'll take the final version of what uh, you have. Um, after that, we will schedule some face-to-face uh, uh, -face, uh, uh, discussion. I would call it an, an oral examination. It's just a discussion where we, uh, we open your project uh, we test your project to check whether it implements uh, the required functionality. We sit together, we open the project on my computer and we'll, uh, we see it together working. And uh, I will ask, uh, I or Juan, uh, we are splitting the, uh, this nice part of the course, um, uh, we ask questions about the, okay, why something is working, how did you do this, uh, uh, can you show me how you implemented this functionality and so on. So just, uh, to check whether, well, in that moment, uh, we are checking two, two separate issues. One, whether the project implements all functionalities or which are missing or which are wrong. For example. And whether you know your product. Since you have 20 days to work on your own, we need to be sure that it's your project. Okay, it's not something that you, you know, paid somebody else to do for you and you are just submitting. 
or something like that. So uh, if we have the impression during the discussion that you don't know your project, we'll ask you to leave, hmm? of course, quite natural. <laughs> if you have some difficulty in understanding it, well, there'll be some, some scores because maybe you implemented something. It's, it's okay of, for um, helping each other, okay? We are, not, we are not enforcing any control to ensure that, you're okay, you are working in your closed room and not uh, uh, speaking to anybody else. You can help your, uh, in each date, the project will be the same for everybody. But we are asking you to work individually. Of course, there will be some problems. You can you know, uh, share some information as long as during the exam date, uh, you know everything about your project. Even if there's something that you have been helped with, Okay, but you have to learn it to understand it. Okay, so what I saw many times, no, not many times, some, sometimes is people getting, say, external contribution, which are at a higher complexity level of what they can manage. Maybe there's some professional or some people who are you know, more skilled than them. They developed some part and they didn't, they didn't understand what was in the project because somebody else contributed it in, and so this is very. Embarrassing, I don't think that. <laughs> but practically, we have 26 points to evaluate the project and uh, six points to evaluate the discussion. If we don't have the impression that okay, the, 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 the project is not yours. Uh, normally, I, by default, I give six, uh, five points here, and it will be six if you are particularly driven. Okay? The default is six, uh, is five. And if you have, you are not so sure about something, maybe it can be four or three, something like that. Less than three probably means that you are not able to understand basic questions. Uh, and so I will ask you to, to meet uh, and the next uh, uh, exam day. Okay? Uh, these are the basic points. And then there are also a lot of rules about how to submit uh, the, the rules to the projects and so on, the requirement, and something that we cannot talk about today because we we still don't know what we are talking about, huh? how the, the project is organized. Uh, depending on the, um, the oral discussion, usually will be, okay, in the, in the day of the exam and in the next uh, days or the next week, uh, probably. Okay, so when uh, the, the day submission closes, the exam submission closes, I will publish a calendar uh, so you can book a slot uh, on the calendar. So you, you choose. I will give you several opportunities, and you choose the date. And so uh, it should be quite easy also if you have other exams in the same days uh, to, to, to join in the right moment. We are not uh, evaluating the projects before you. No? In the beginning, the first year, we were evaluating all the projects and then doing all the discussion. But it was very mm, anxious for both sides because we spent uh, several days, uh, maybe, okay, in the first day, so we have. 120 projects or something like that. So we have maybe eight, nine days where we are working full time and trying to correct, and we are waiting for the scores and you don't know whether it's better. So it was very harsh, okay, it was very easy. So we decided and uh, we already tested last year, it works well that uh, on the day we, 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 we opened the project for the first time together, okay? So we are more or less uh, 30 minutes of discussion for each project, more or less. And, uh, but at least it uh, shortens the time from exam to score. Okay. Um, well, these are just details about the, the development of the exam project. Uh, we just uh, ask you to develop a project uh, similar to the ones uh, with the same technology, with the same structure as the ones that uh, we are we will be developing in the last uh, in the last uh, weeks of the course, in the last labs, basically. Huh? Um, and okay, everything will be uh, meant with with, uh, with the GitHub cluster. Okay, this is uh, everything that uh, I already said. Hmm? Yeah, don't don't be afraid about this theoretical. I'm not going to ask theoretical questions about uh, the language implementation or whatever. It means just understanding what you did and why. Hmm? It's about your project. Okay. Uh, apart from the slides, uh, where do we get information that we need? 
uh, well, information about uh, in general web technologies, so JavaScript, HTML, CSS, is very well explained in the MDM, Mozilla Developer Network. Okay, so it has uh, all sorts of uh, information that you can read and it's a reference uh, uh, website. Um, they will uh, usually look for when we need some special information about web technologies in general. About React, uh, there is this React JS website that also has a lot, all the tutorials and documentation about React. I will, will also use uh, mostly, this, they are, they are uh, re rewriting, rebuilding the documentation, all, all the documentation, and there's uh, another website which is called Beta React JS of all, which contains the new documentation. It's not complete because they're still working on it, but uh, the information that is in the new website is much better than the previous one. So at the first choice, we'll try to look at the, uh, or, or read documentation from the better website and then also uh, for little things that are missing, there's also the, the old website where you can download the, uh, React and so on. So these are the, the two main resources. And then, okay, these topics are widespread. So there are tons and hundreds of books uh, about uh, HTML, uh, JavaScript. Uh, there are tens of books about React. Uh, in all, uh, in all different uh, versions. So, if you, I just put here some example, but uh, they are quite old, also, also, also some a bit older. Uh, we, we don't need them. There's a, I like this website. There's a lot of websites with free resources also. I like this website for the title, You Don't Know JavaScript Yet. Uh, and it's a bit on depth information that can be useful after the first introduction. To better understand some uh, some aspects uh, which are um, the more specific aspects of this that are implemented in JavaScript in a different way uh, compared to others. Mm -hmm. A simpler one is uh, are the ebooks from uh, Flavio Copes, which is an, an Italian guy, uh, a developer that publishes a lot uh, of, uh, of information, and uh, these are easier to read, mm -hmm. uh, maybe more suitable for the introduction. All of these are free ebooks. Uh, uh, online and there are other books here that are maybe in most of the cases are have a, a free version but we could go on for hours just listing uh, good resources about JavaScript um, again here javascript.info the doc okay of course we still have Google and so we still have uh, a stack overflow <laughs> to, to seek for specific uh, answers to might be programming questions or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And now we also have a, what's the name, ChatGPT mm -hmm. that uh, gives you very detailed answers and sometimes they're wrong. And so we just need to, it's very interesting because you have a very good answer, but maybe it's wrong. So it's a debugging exercise. To say. Okay, this is a good answer. Like, like Stack Overflow, you get a response and maybe wrong. And so you need to understand it. <laughs> but uh, it's a good exercise. Uh, concerning tools, uh, we are working uh, all in JavaScript. We, so uh, what we need is a runtime for executing JavaScript programs. Uh, that will be Node, not JS, which is a JavaScript interpreter. It's available for all the operating systems. Uh, you can download an installer from its website, uh, uh, or if you have a Linux distribution, uh, there, is a, uh, there are packages you know, to add to your package manager in Ubuntu or whatever on this node source uh, um, distribution website. Okay, so on the main project, you don't find the, the Linux distributions, only uh, the Linux uh, say executables. You need to go there if you want to use the package manager so that you can keep um, node updated. Hmm. The suggestion here, or the requirement for this course, is to use the, the latest LTS version. Right? You know, the LTS stands for long-term support. There is a, uh, which is the, uh, uh, at the moment, uh, version 18. There's already a version 19 in progress, but uh, just for the stability of the course, we need to, because sometimes something changes and we, we don't want some features to change uh, two days before the exam, okay? So we keep with a, with a more stable version, 18 LTS. 
try to install that. Hmm? Um, and uh, uh, later on in the course, we also have to install or use uh, some extensions in our browsers, Firefox or, or Chrome, whatever, uh, to help us to debug uh, the application. So the, uh, the, ins the, the, the inspector tool is already useful for developing JavaScript, but when we move to React, uh, where the JavaScript code is not our code, but has been generated, there are other extensions to let us understand uh, what is happening at a higher level. Hmm? We'll come to that. And as a programming environment, uh, we choose to use uh, um, Visual Studio Code, VS Code, by Microsoft, um, which is very well, quite good at the, um, uh, for the JavaScript environment. Hmm? You, do you prefer to use the uh, WebStorm? Uh, feel free to use it. Uh, we don't care, basically. Okay. What we care is about the project that you develop. You develop. But in the classes, we are going to use uh, Visual Studio Code. Okay, so that's, uh, that's it for the introduction. If, do you have any questions? Did you have any, is there any topic that I missed? No, okay. So let me start uh, with the real topics. Uh, just. Uh, 